I'm going to show you how to simulate complex objects with rigid body simulations. Out of the box, you'd get something like this with incorrect collisions, but we want to make it so this complex object is correctly colliding with the inner sphere. All right, so in a fresh scene with Houdini, let's drop down a geometry node, dive inside here, drop down a sphere. We want to shatter the sphere in a way that makes it so the pieces are concave meaning they're not going to be convex like if I drop down a convex hole what it does is it creates this algorithm that wraps around the entire shape and most simulations for RBD simulations you're going to be working with convex collisions so what we could do is drop down an RBD material fracture and then drop down an exploded view and we can see the way that it shatters these pieces if I were to drop every single one of these into a for loop and then add a convex hole, we see that every single shape here is going to be a nice convex shape, which is ideal for RBD simulations. However, what if we were to say drop down a tube right here, and I'm going to just make this a little bit smaller, a little bit higher, put some end caps on it, and then I will also transform it this way and merge the two together. So I'll drop down a merged node. Okay, maybe we will rotate this one more time here and merge that in. So we get this nice, interesting shape. And so what if we were to fracture this sphere with this shape? Okay, so if we, instead of doing subtract, change this to shatter and then drop down an exploded view, what we're going to get are a bunch of shapes here, which we don't want yet, okay? So what we need to do first is actually Boolean these shapes together, union them so they become one shape, and then we can subtract this. So then we get two seemingly solid shapes that aren't moving, but if I double-click here in my viewport and hit delete, we do see that we will have two different shapes here. And we can even drop down a connectivity SOP, change that to the primitive level, click on the eye here, click on class, and we see that we do have two different connected pieces. However, if I were to iterate through this, you're gonna see that our convex hole is not going to be ideal. Okay, so for the, for, for the first convex hole, it's actually gonna make this into a whole sphere and then the other convex shape is going to be like this, okay? So that's not ideal because if we want to pack these into points, so what I can do is drop down an assemble node, okay? And I'm gonna create packed primitives. And sure, we can create a name attribute. If I middle mouse click over this, we see we have a name attribute, which is essential. You have to have a name attribute. Go over to our geometry spreadsheet and we have piece one, piece two. Okay, I'm actually going to transform this up just a bit so it can fall onto a ground plane to show you. If I drop down a RBD, or I'm just gonna make one from scratch, I'm going to put this into a dot network, dive inside here, drop down a rigid body solver, RBD packed object, gravity, oops, and I'm going to merge in a ground plane, okay? Now, so I've got our RBD simulation set up right here, but Nothing's happening because we are not taking in any geometry. So I'm going to change this to first context geometry. And if we play the simulation, you see that it's just going to come. They're not going to collide properly. If they are colliding properly, this shape would stay inside. But because they already start colliding, we get unexpected behavior. Because sometimes when they're like this, they'll explode. But I think because they're already intersecting, we're not getting an explosion. We could increase our sub steps to 60, and again, we still see that we're not getting correct collisions. Okay, so how can we fix this problem? You could, we could test changing this to concave objects, maybe turn this display off, but that's insanely slow. I've actually never even used that, and I don't know anyone that does use concave. Who knows, it may even crash my setup right here. I'm gonna hit X to cancel. Going to change this back to convex hole, okay? So we really have to be able to solve this so then our unique 
our uniquely shaped object can collide properly. So here's what I would do in order to solve that. What we can do is say we had had these pieces broken up specifically how we wanted them. Well, before assembling them, or even after assembling them, we create a name attribute, okay? So we could unpack them, and then what we could do is transfer the name attribute. So now we have a, maybe we don't need to even transfer that name attribute. Now we have our name attribute at the primitive level, and let's, let's just check it out to make sure it was okay. That's good, piece one, piece zero. So what we could do is attribute rename. We could call this, at the primitive level, we could name this name to parent name. Okay, so now we've created a parent name, and then for each of these parent names, we could just do a blanking on the convex, what's it called, convex decomposition. So what we want to do is change our piece attribute to parent name, and we plug this in here. Okay, so right off the bat, our max concavity is set to one meter. So I'm not even convinced we're going to get much of a difference here. So if we turn on exploded view, we can see how our shapes are looking. Or even we're outputting a segment attribute, we could click the eye here and click that to visualize. So let's drop this to point one. So now we see that it's breaking it up into smaller pieces and maybe even 0 0.05. So we have these smaller pieces that are now getting broken up, but we still have a couple problematic areas. So maybe we go even smaller to 0 0.01. So now as we explode this, we see that we have all these little pieces and that this other piece right here will be able to most likely collide properly. If I real click quick before here, double click here, just blast that away just to test, we can see that our shapes here will act properly or will have nice convex collisions. So now that we've been able to do this, what we need to do is essentially make sure that all these pieces can be glued together and make it so that glue will never break. So then the pieces will collide properly. So a lot of times with RBDs, what we do is we need to just manage our names correctly. That's why I, I have a parent name. Because when this is broken up, what we can do with that segment attribute is create custom names. So primitive wrangle, and we middle mouse click here, we have a parent name, okay? So we could say, based on our segment, we could say our name is equal to child and then plus int to alpha int at segment. So now if we, we visualize our names or we go over to our geometry spreadsheet, we've created child pieces and we do have our parent name attribute, then now what we could do is just say our name is equal to our string at parent name plus maybe an underscore to separate it, make it a little bit more readable, plus s at name. So when we do this, we're essentially creating um, pieces that have unique names now, but they also have a parent name to keep track or to essentially separate things when we glue things together. Okay, so names are good right there. Now what we wanna do is just create some glue for these pieces. So what I'm gonna do is drop down a connect JSON pieces node, I'm gonna plug it in here, and we see that it starts to create these lines. And these lines basically are looking for name attributes or pieces to glue together, okay? So what we could do is increase our search radius here, maybe make it that big, and maybe maybe um, we can try different setups here. Maybe I'll do from surface pieces, change our max connections to five here. So what's happening is each one of these pieces is trying to connect itself to other pieces. However, this is gluing the whole thing together. So what we could do from here is basically just only glue pieces that have the same parent name. So instead of just gluing these together right here, we could drop down a for loop here and name our, I will delete this channel reference. We'll say our piece reference is parent name. Okay, so let's just make sure this is working and it's not, okay, it's recalculated. So if we just do a single pass first, we'll make sure that we are separating, something's not quite working. 
me try that again for each connected piece. So right now it's referencing this class attribute, which we don't necessarily want. So I will just delete this right here, change this to parent name and see if that works better. Oh, well, we had blasted this here just for the sake of seeing things here. So now we will have two different shapes. And so we can now iterate through here and let's turn off or let's just connect these. Let's see the best way to do this. Let's just lower our amount of connections and um, maybe change our max search points. We don't want tons of connections, just enough to keep the whole shape glued together. Okay. And so it's going to glue those together and then it's going to do it for the others as well. But we see now that that these these constraints that are made with a name attribute, if we go over to our names, we can see that they're going to correlate to different pieces. Okay. So what we could do is even at the point level, just to visualize a little bit better, we could say string splits is equal to, we can do a split function on the name or re split. All right. So this function basically is going to take in a string and it's going to need to be split based on a certain expression. So our expression will be our parent name. And what we could do is honestly just split it by the underscores and then pass in our name. And so then we could visualize this by just saying string at test equals splits zero. That's not working because we have to declare this as an array. Okay. So if we go back to our geometry spreadsheet, we see that we have our test attribute just grabbing that parent name. So what I could do is just click on that to make that a visualizer and turn some of these off. We can go to test, change this to a color and random from attribute. And that doesn't want to be working right now. Sometimes I don't even quite know. We could try in a new viewport that does happen, but I'm not entirely sure why it's not wanting to output a correct visualizer. Well, what we could do is just blast at test equals parent zero or piece zero. Okay. So now we can toggle this just to make sure that it's different constraints connecting the pieces. So that's set up. So these are constraints, but they, 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 they have names, but we just need to drop down in RBD constraints properties and we'll plug that in here. And so now it will create proper constraints that need to be on there. And all we really need to do here is instead change this strength from 10,000 to negative one. And that will basically tell the RBD solver, Hey, you never can break. Okay. So we'll pipe in these constraints to here, but right now we still, we're not piping in the shatter geometry that we had. So we actually have our names here, all these unique pieces. And what we want to do is actually assemble from here. So if we assemble these, create pack geometry, we want to uncheck create name attribute because we already created a name attribute that will then transfer properly. So we plug that in here and I'm going to ignore the constraints. Just make sure this is testing out. Pro uh, we're testing this out properly. And so right now I'll turn off this collision geometry. We see that our points drop and they shatter. So they are working correctly. But now if we put in a constraint network, okay, I'm going to say the source is going to be our second context geometry because our second context is right here. And then I'm going to put a glue constraint relationship and I'm going to change the strength to one. So it's just going to multiply by whatever, whatever was set here. And our constraint name here is glue and our constraint data name here is glue as well. Okay. So if we plug this in, it should now work properly. So what's going on here is because these are glued together, we now, if I turn off this visualizer for here, we can see these constraints come down and they are gluing this object together. To test this real quick, we could also, we could also just blast from here. Oh, we don't want to do that. Let's, let's, um, let's just say we're going to do a single pass here. So we're going to do a single pass on our second piece, which is that piece that looks more like the plus sign. So now if we only have constraints coming in 
for that piece, the outer sphere should break, but the inner piece right here will stay intact. So now we can control exactly how our collision should look, and we are getting proper collisions for a convex shape. So if you are struggling with some of your RBD simulations and controlling some of the pieces, this is one approach that you can take in order to isolate different pieces. Granted, shattering into this many pieces is probably overkill, probably not as efficient as it could be, especially if you got like a big building or a big shape. So you could try other techniques like a Voronezh shatter and just try and optimize this the best you can. But this is sufficient in order to illustrate the example of how to correctly simulate wonky shaped or concave objects, I guess you could say. So I hope you enjoyed this. And hey, if you stuck around until now and you haven't subscribed or liked the video, if you could do that, that'd be awesome. I mean, uh, you're probably enjoying the content. So uh, I don't know if you could, that'd be great. All right. Catch you next time.